Hi there, everybody. This is Chris Schmidt from Grayscale Gorilla, and welcome back to the signal training videos. So, what are we dealing with this time? This time, we're going to be dealing with the scripts that we provide along with signal. So, what do we got? Uh, well, we're just going to go through them one by one. So, let's see what the first one is. I'm going to go with signal scripts. Now, there's two different types of signal scripts. And actually, in your version, you won't see uh, this bottom folder because we use that to create these. Um, so, there are two different types of scripts. There are modifiers, which change existing setups you already have and then there's presets which will create new animation so actually let's start with presets um i'm actually going to tear off this tab so we can kind of quickly get access to them Ooh, and we're gonna have these icons change sorry about that um anyway uh let's just go through them one at a time so i'm going to create a cube and let's do the bounce one first and the bounce one works best if we create a null because that's a zero, 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 and then we put the cube in the null, and maybe we'll move the, the cube up 100 so it looks like it's sitting on the ground. So now all we have to do is click on this null, and I can click on, I'm gonna zoom out a bit because I think it jumps. If I click on that, it's going to set up an entire complex signal animation. So you see we've got all these different tags. If I rewind and hit play, you'll see that we have a fun little animation where we've got this cube and he's bouncing around. If we were to add more frames, and we've got an infinite never repeating animation of this happy little cube guy just bouncing around doing his thing. Um, so that is bounce. Uh, and we'll be coming back to that in a little bit with a, some of the modifier scripts. Um, but that's that one. Uh, next up is Flickr. Flickr, I like. Uh, I'm going to click on this menu here, which I can barely see. I'm going to create a light. Uh, and this also works really well on color. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I create this light. I'm going to click on Flickr. And it, what's set up to do is kind of look like, like maybe like a neon bulb that's kind of burning out a little bit. You'll see right here, our feedback, uh, it's just pulling down from the peak every once in a while. Just bleep, 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 bleep. So that's just random and you'll never see it repeat. And it's just kind of an annoying, crazy buzzing uh, this to a light. So there's a quick modifier for that. Uh, next up, we have PSR Vibrate. This, we intentionally set up to essentially exactly mimic the functionality of the old Cinema 4D Vibrate tag. So you have to just create any object and say uh, PSR Vibrate, and there we go. It's automatically has a position, scale, and rotation already all set up with some noise, and it's all set up for you to go into any of these individual tabs and say, okay, uh, yeah, position's great, but I want more of it. So you're going to crank up the position to go to 1,000 so it flies around more. Uh, or maybe you just created that and you're like, uh, okay, that's all good, but I actually didn't want the rotation. You delete that. Oh. And then, you know, maybe zero out your rotation again. And now we just have the position and scale zooming around. So, yeah, PSR looks, works just like uh, the Vibrate does, and it creates three different tags. I'm actually do that for you. Um, next one's very similar. It's just PSR. So when we make a, click, <clears throat> make a cube and click PSR, uh, if I hit play, nothing's actually happening. All it's done is prepared the PSR. So it's already got position, scale, and rotation built in, but everything's been zeroed out. So it's ready for you to be like, oh, uh, I have PSR, but I want it driven through noise. I'll actually grab all three of these. I want these driven through noise, and then in the noise tab, actually we do have to do them individually because they have different parameters in there. So we could say uh, in the position, Let's say we want it to go 555, 555, 555, and then rotation, we want it to spin 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. It's just it's just a one to prep the blank PSR for you so you don't have to drag them in. Uh, next up is random light. This one's a little crazy, uh, and I, I'll probably be talking about it in the tutorial, but it, it ends up being really neat uh, for me. And actually, let me just show you, maybe it won't even be a tutorial because I can show you right now. I'm going to create a sphere. I'm going to move it up 100. I'm going to create a floor. So, okay, nothing too crazy. And let's turn off our lighting here. Um, so we got a floor and some lighting. But if I go here and I click on the light, I can click random light, and it's automatically going to randomize the intensity, the color, the shadow density, and its position. And it actually is set to be it's going really fast, so every single frame is completely random. But... Where, where this would get useful would be once we combine it with one of the modifier scripts. So I guess we'll maybe... Uh, well, let's talk about one of the modifier scripts here. I guess we're going slightly out of order, but that's fine. I'm going to 
copy this light like six times. So we're going to actually grab all of these signal tags and then we're going to go to scripts and I'm going to go to signal scripts modifiers because we're modifying something that already exists. And I'm going to just click random seed. And what that's going to do is randomize all of the different seeds. But now what it's done is all of these are completely randomly offset from each other. So now every time I frame forward, we're getting a completely new unique lighting scheme. So it's pretty specific. It's just a fun little toy. But if I hit render, then we start getting all these crazy easy lights uh and then if we were to maybe set i'm gonna turn off render i'm gonna turn off from saving i'm gonna have it start rendering out up to let's just say 90 frames i can hit render so now in a kind of crazy abstract way you see we're getting all these you these completely randomly generated lighting schemes uh and then here you get your uh, nice preview going so you can be like oh i like the lighting of that it, this whole setup's a little dark i should have copied the light a couple more times but look, every single one of these is, is a completely different lighting scheme. So just a, just a fun thing to play around with. Nothing uh, nothing too special, but that is uh, that is random light. So what's next? Uh, smooth 90. So I'm going to delete everything. Uh, next up is smooth 90 degree rotation. So if we were to maybe make a simple example, I'm going to create... Uh, let's, let's create... What's something we can see? I guess... Uh, oop, uh, let's create a pyramid. So I'm going to click smooth 90. So I click that, and you see it's rotated a little bit already. And actually, this is assuming they were done on a 90 frame animation. So let me drop back that, that back down to that. So uh, this is, it just automatically sets up a rotation tag where your object is going to, in a smooth fashion, rotate 90 degrees. Not anything particularly fancy, but where this might be useful is, let's say you, I'm going to delete it off here. So now we just have a pyramid. In fact, let's, uh, let's make a landscape object. So we got a landscape object and it's a mountain. So what, where this might be useful would be we create a null and then we create a camera. So we link to our camera, drop the camera in the null, and now the null, we can click smooth 90. And what's going to happen is we have a 90 frame animation that smoothly is going to rotate us 90 degrees around the mountain. So pretty straightforward. At any given point, we could still grab the camera and say, oh, I want to be closer. So now we're zoomed in on the peak of the mountain and then we can rotate around that. So smooth 90, really straightforward. Um, next up is spin forever. So um, there's lots of reasons you might want something spinning forever. Uh, let's make a figure. I'm going to click spin forever. And now, I should probably have rewound. But anyway, when I hit play, he's just going to keep spinning around forever. It's really straightforward. If we click on the tag, we can change these values, same thing we want. We can make the loop go faster. We can change the way the arcs are. Um, but uh, if you want like a turntable animation, if you wanted a uh, camera spinning around the object forever, if you wanted a gear turning, whatever the case, this is just a really quick way of automatically applying a preset that will spin this guy forever. So if you want to get this going faster, we could set it up to say 720, or we could increase our strength more, and now it's spinning super fast, and it'll just keep going and looping forever. All right, great. So that is presets and we might actually still use a couple of these when we're talking about the modifiers but let's go ahead and go to our signal scripts and go to our modifiers and tear that off and we're going to talk about all of these now so what do we got this time well we have uh bake keyframes uh and that'll be off the selected objects so as uh let's create a cube and actually i'm going to just say psr vibrate and i'm going to copy and paste it a couple times and then Actually, I'm going to grab all these, and we'll do the other script again, random seed, and click random seed. And now they've all been randomized, so they're all kind of doing their thing right on top of each other. In fact, I'm going to grab the position, and I'm going to crank up its power a little more. Let's go to 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. There we go. Now they're all flying around doing their own crazy thing. So uh, what this will do is uh, automatically bake all of the currently selected frames. So if I grab all these tags, and I hit bake keyframe selected, then it's going to take that little blip. But now, if we click on here, you'll see that all the keyframes have been converted. So, awesome. And then we have the opposite one. The next tag is just clear keyframes selected. So, I click on that. All the keyframes have been removed. And we're back to signal running. Uh, okay. Next. Next up. Yeah, I guess we'll just get rid of this. And we'll talk about the next one. Next one was a special request via from Nick. And that is copy left, copy right. So, where this might be important is I'm going to create a camera. And uh, let's create the landscape so we get context again so we got our mountain again so we've got our camera and let's say we want to animate the position of the camera i'm going to create the camera and i'm going to create a signal and i want to drive the position so i'm going to grab position drag it in the signal boom now if we go into signal what we're going to see is that we have zero 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 and then the final position the final position is our current position so actually if we were to drag this for an animation it's going to zoom from zero and it's going to pull out the entire way 
Um, so what Nick requested was this copy left, copy right. So if we click copy left, it's going to take these numbers and then put them over here. So copy left, boom. And now those numbers are over there. Um, and actually now there won't be any animation. But what that means is we could be like, okay, uh, this is the position we start at, but now we can raise it up. So now our animation isn't flying from the center. It's just moving upward. And there's a lot of a lot of things along those lines that could be helpful. I'm going to hit undo. And the other, uh, the other one is pretty straightforward. It's copy right. So we'll take the left ones and copy them to the right. So copy right, boom, everything is zeroed out now. Um, yeah, so that is uh, copy left, copy right. Next up is random offset by object. So this one, it, this one might be a little specific, but uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, I'm gonna create the bounce setup again. I'm gonna create a sphere this time. Um, so I'm gonna put a sphere inside a null and I move the sphere up 100 so it looks like it's sitting on the ground, awesome. So I'm gonna take that, I'm going to say bounce. And now uh, the sphere's already jumped to a random bounce position. So now you see he's bouncing around, doing his thing. Now, if we were to, this uh, this is not what we want to do. If I were to do that random seed button, this will completely break the animation. Like he's gonna be, well, it's hard to tell here, but if we just do a random seed, like he's spinning at the wrong spot, the bounces won't be synced up with where it's leaping. So that's no good. Um, so what we could do is a random offset by object. So what that will do is take this entire object and offset it to a random amount. So let's say we don't like this particular animation for this. I can say a random offset. And now it's, you see it's setting up to be a different bounce. So where this might be most apparent is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go copy, paste, 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 paste. Now we've got a whole bunch of signal tags and a whole bunch of bouncing. Um, but you, they're all in the exact same spot because they're all exact copies of each other. Now all I have to do is grab these objects and I, actually, I think I have to grab the tags. I'm not sure. Let me try. I'm going to grab these. I'm going to say random offset by object. Okay, we do have to grab the tags. I'm going to grab all these tags, and I'm going to say random offset by object. And as soon as we do that, now all these guys are going to get their own random offsets, and they're all doing their own little bounce animation, not interfering with each other. And you can keep on clicking that, and they're going to keep getting different random offsets. Okay, so there's that. Uh, random offset by object. Next up, random seed. We've already been doing that a ton. Uh, Random seed is a great one for, for when you're doing anything involving any kind of noise. So we've got the, uh, all right, let's do a light. Uh, I'm gonna create a light, which is hidden behind here. And I'm gonna create a signal. Oh, actually, uh, well, even here, let's uh, do this as an example. I got this light, I'm going to apply a flicker. So this is now flickering randomly. So I'm gonna copy and paste it and then move it over. And I'm gonna grab both those, copy and paste it, move it over and paste. So now we've got these four lights, but you'll see that these four lights are all flickering together. So if we were to go into these tags and grab all the tags, and now I even named these, so uh, we got our main noise and then we have our subtle noise, and you see how these are twitching around, but they're, they're identical. Um, so all we have to do is hit right here, random seed, and you'll see our seed right here. When I hit random seed, it says multiple values because each one now has its own random seed applied. And now you see they're all flickering, not together. They're all completely random because every seed of every tag you have selected has now had its seed randomized. Awesome. So what's next? Next is select all signal tags. So you see I only have one signal tag selected. If I hit select all signal tags, it'll grab all of the signal tags. So in that bounce Example, like I could take these and copy and paste it a ton of times, and now I'm going to select all signal tags. I grab all the signal tags, and now I could say bake keyframe selected. And I can hit bake, and now all of those are going to get baked. They're all keyframed out, and signal's not doing anything. I could actually go over here, make sure I click it properly, hit delete. I've deleted out all the signal tags, and we've got our animation baked to these individual ones. And we all we had to do is click a couple buttons here in the scripts and the presets and the uh, modifiers. So awesome. Uh, select off of current objects. Actually, I can hit undo a few times. And I guess we don't need so many lights. Um, let's say, uh, like in theory, you could have a whole bunch of different signal tags, just like in the bounce. So I'm gonna copy, make a bunch of copies of those. So uh, let's say you wanna grab all the tags and they're all buried in hierarchies and whatnot. So you just grab, say, these two objects. Actually, let's say we wanted to grab these and these. Like it'd be, we'd have to grab like that and then maybe deselect. Um, it could be more complicated than that, but I can grab these two objects and I can say select off of current objects. Click on that. We're going to get all signals from the current objects. Pretty straightforward. All right. Next up is time multiply. This one uh, is pretty useful, I think. So I'm going to go and create that landscape setup again for our camera. And I'm going to create that null. 
I then create the camera. I'm going to link to the camera. I'm going to drop it in the null. And let's get our smooth 90. Oops, I got linked to my camera. So what's going to happen right now is I hit play. And you see it's doing our spin. It's working perfectly fine. Now we could have a more complex animation, but this is just an example. Um, if I click on our tag, we want to make sure we have it selected. We can click on time multiply. And now what we can do is it'll pop up and it's going to bring, bring a little dialog box up. And it wants to know what you want to multiply by. So let's say I want this to go twice as fast. So if it's going twice as fast, I'm going to say 0.5. It should take half the amount of time. So now you'll see that it only takes 45 frames to complete that motion. Uh, we can click time multiply. And if I hit 2, we should be back to regular. And I can hit time multiply again. And this time I can say uh, we want to take five times as long. So now it's going to move very slowly. We hit time multiply and say multiply by 0.1. And now it's going to move really quick again. Zip. Um, so yeah, time multiply will multiply all of the animations you have and uh, speed them up or slow them down. The uh, let's see, Let's see another example. Maybe even the... Uh, Yeah, actually, this quick light one, just, just as an example, not that this is a practical thing, but I create this light, I'm going to click on the random light. So now let's just uh, click on this light and look at our speed here. So if I were to hit play, you see that's going super duper fast. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to click select all signal tags, and I get all my signal tags, and I hit time multiply, and now I'm going to go really slow. I'm going to say, well, let's do 0.1 to start out, but that, that might not be that much. I go back to my light, and now it's still going super fast. So I'm going to say time multiply by 0 0.01. Uh, I guess I did set these settings up crazy fast. So this might be a bad example. 0 0.1 again. Maybe we're starting to get somewhere. 0 0.01. Okay, well, apparently I just cranked these settings up so dang fast. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess we have to get down to a really low value before we see it. So that was a bad example. Uh, I guess a better example would be the bounce. If we if, did the time multiplying the bounce, they'll bounce twice as fast or half as fast. Uh, next up would be a time offset. Let's say you're working on an animation for a client and you have this camera move and it's all animated by, via signal and you didn't do anything with keyframes and you need your entire project pushed forward or backward. Like It's like, oh, that looks really good, but I need to be five frames earlier. Um, what's a, I don't want to just keep doing these same examples forever, but uh, why not? Why don't we just go and create figure i'm gonna click on it and say smooth 90 so it's gonna rotate 90 degrees so from 0 to 90 he's let's have him go faster actually i'm gonna say from 0 to 10 okay this is once again just as an example but you see he turns really quickly from 0 to 10 and you're like oh that looks great uh and you have a hundred of these copied and you're like but i need everything to be offset so i maybe hit there's only the one tag well, let's say there's a ton of these guys i'd hit select all signal tags we grab all the signal tags and then i hit time offset how many frames do we want to go forward or backwards by Let's say this shouldn't start for another 10 seconds. Actually, let's say 80. So now it should jump everything forward 80 frames, uh, the offset. So now we shouldn't see this guy move until the last 10 frames. Zip. So there we go. That, uh, you can just offset your time positive or negative through the time offset and does all of them globally. So just, just a little helper tools. And we might be making a lot more of these in the future, depending on uh, the way people end up using Signal. Uh, but anyway, that should pretty much cover the scripts. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.